He just flew into the clouds. Is this working for you, or are you still seeing with the peripheral at the left? No, I'm not, I'm, well, I'm not trying to cheat. Yeah, okay, cool. Are you still looking out for traffic? Oh, totally, man. I got to look out. Keeping your flight chops sharp by flying with a safety pilot. This is part one of two videos that I did with my flying friend, Maron. We often fly together, and we rarely have a specific reason to fly, so we're always looking for excuses. Today, I showed up late, but I got there as he was doing the walk around, which was fine, because he was going to be PIC for the first leg. So I pretty much got in, set up my cameras, and we got going. You know? Gotcha. Just gonna look at the shot on this one, sorry. Okay, go ahead. I guess that's fine, it's kind of a lot of wing and hanger. The biggest takeaway for me from this flight was a very small thing led to a pretty large mistake that I made on my leg, so please do stick around for part two to see that play out. Essentially, after having been very careful figuring out how to fly with cameras so that they did not cause a distraction during flight, this was the first time that I can honestly say that my setup using my cameras and my audio recording did lead to a contributing factor in an error. And Punctuation Com, Moscow Charlie Hotel, radio check please. This was one of those perfect days where everybody was flying and no one was in dispatch to hear Mehran's radio call, but I appreciate his tenacity that he didn't want to leave without getting it done. I'm not going to go anywhere, I want to make sure I get this radio check done. Hey, traffic at Burlington, Oscar Charlie Hotel is looking for a radio check please. Oscar Charlie Hotel, with Tango Tango, you're 5 by 5 Thank you sir, Oscar Charlie Hotel. So the importance of actually doing a radio check for every flight comes up in part 2. Uh, but there's lots of great learning moments in this leg, starting with this one. Uh -oh. Would you would you park that close to an airplane? No. It's crazy, man. If you happen to like stop paying attention for one second, I'll take a picture of that in the sanity. Yeah, I don't feel comfortable with that guy so close. I'm keeping an eye on him. In retrospect, I wonder if I missed an opportunity by not saying something politely and constructively to this guy that it wasn't the best idea to do his run up like three feet off our wingtip. Uh, but maybe he was a student that didn't know any better, so I just thought I'd share it here to make up for not saying something at the time. There's a lot of airplanes lined up there to go today. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, we have full manifold pressure. Airspeed alive, temperature pressures are green. We're heading to the local practice area for some air work before stopping for lunch at a local airport and then swapping seats and heading home. And we have a positive rate of climb. Gear up. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to start with a steep turn, just to, as Dennis says, to limber up the, uh, what does he call them? Flying muscles? muscles. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so for a steep turn, we'll do the hazel, the height's good, the area's good. This is the check we do before doing air work, but check with your instructor about your airplane. Okay, I'm going to do a steep turn to the left, see if I can keep it coordinated. And you definitely check clear, yeah? Yep. We have a pretty good pilot-buddy dynamic where we're able to be safety pilots for each other without offending each other if we have suggestions or thoughts. You know, in smooth air, it's almost like cheating you. <laughs> well, if you do it wrong, you do it wrong. So, no, I think you're doing a good job. You've got your altitude nailed. But there's definitely a fine line with flying with other pilots and definitely with making these videos as far as crossing that line into instruction. So I want to be very clear that this is not instruction, but this is us just going out there and working on getting better. In this case, I'm working on following my Bible, which is The Killing Zone. And this book is amazing. I highly recommend every pilot should read it. Uh, there's a section that covers the exercises and the skills that tend to be lost by pilots over time. So we're kind of picking away at that list. On this flight, Maron picked a couple exercises, and then on my leg, I'm going to do a couple. So the first one that Maron wanted to do was the simulated 180 on instruments. I was going to say, you just flew into the clouds. You all okay, okay, so go for okay. it. I got the lookout. Okay. Now, of course, in training, the biggest challenge is being surprised and adding that element. So that's part of the fun of flying with a safety pilot, being able to throw curveballs at each other. Is this working for you, or are you still seeing with the peripheral at the left? No, I'm not, I'm, well, I'm not trying to cheat. Yeah, okay, cool. So I'm going to make it a really... Yeah, do whatever you got to do safely. Yeah. If it's not steep, don't do it steep. Just yeah. do a 180 right. safely. Don't lose Stick control. Stick rate one. We should grab a hood next time. I'll grab a what? A hood? Yeah, but this works. We kind of could simulate that you're surprised, right? Yeah. yeah that's, that's, part, that's part of what I feel like isn't the best about training, where you kind of always know. Yeah. Are you still looking out for traffic? Oh, totally, man. I got to look out. So you started it at 3,000 feet, right? Yeah, and I'm getting Yeah, you're, you're not bad. And, man, it's, it's a two-minute turn, right, at rate one. That's a thing. It's going to take forever. Right. If you did the clock and all that good stuff, like the yeah. timing, yeah, yeah, that's right. You should time your rate one turn so that you got a fail safe. So if you forgot to look at your heading, you'd at least know your time yeah. to get your 180. But right. you looked at your heading going in, right? Yep. We're halfway through the turn right now. 
Marin had actually completed the 180 at that point, but I wasn't paying attention because I was looking out for traffic and he was a little distracted, so it was a great exercise in demonstrating distraction. He continued around for a full 360. It was a well-executed rate one, but it was a full 360, so ironically, if it was an actual emergency, he would have ended up right back where he started. So, you've been using the turn coordinator to try to make a, a rate one turn? Yeah. Yeah, cool. Okay, so, um, I just want to well, do one turn about a point, and then, I'm, and then we, let's head to Guelph. Okay. After working on turns about a point for a while, Maron was a little disoriented as to exactly where we were, and he wanted to use the paper chart to try to figure it out. Don't tell me. No, oh, okay. Yeah, you're by yourself. I'm just your safety uh, guardian angel. And I suggested he take it a step further and do the practice diversion with the paper chart to get us to Guelph. Yeah, let's make a plan for how we're going to arrive. Yeah. Okay, let's uh, get an airport advisory and see what they have to say. 123 I monitored on the iPad while he got us there safely with a little bit of meandering. Very traffic, off the golf, golf, two and a half to the north. Circuit height inbound for landing, went across, then overhead the field, then the left downward runway three, two, go. Okay, so we know three two's in use, and we're about seven miles southeast. So we're exactly five miles, and you're pretty much right on everything else. Okay. So before we get there, I'm just cutting in this little section from my leg, which is in part two. I just want to make note of the other radio transmissions here. All Charlie area traffic, Charlie, Tango, Juliet, that's 132 over Southern Ferry now at 2700. We're going to head uh, south along the Beaver Valley to uh, Lake Eugenia for uh, some type of Southern traffic, or Charlie Gulf, during final of six. So that demonstrates two things that were at play today. It was definitely a beautiful day, a lot of people flying, but in my experience, I've never seen it like that with so many transmissions stepping on each other, so maybe it was something to do with a meteorological effect. I'm curious to see what people think about that in the comments, but anyway, let's get back to Mehran, because something funny related to that happens to him. Okay, downward checks are complete, landing lights on, fuel pumps on. Terry, uh, spring water, this is Cessna 172 Papa Romeo Golf, comp check. Barry Springwater shares the frequency with Guelph, and they're about 50 miles away, which is not as far as Thornbury, but still. Anyway, I'll let the intercom play out in real time here so you can see that Maron was trying to not step on anyone when he made his transmissions. Uh, Guelph traffic, Oscar Charlie Hotel is uh, down with 3 2. Uh, Barry Springwater, Papa Romeo Golf. A lot of nervous pilots today. Say again, over. Okay. Traffic, Oscar, 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 Oscar. Oh, you already got rid of comp yeah. Good job. So I got no distraction there. Well, traffic, Oscar Charlie Hotel is turning left base runway 312. Up on the downwind uh, 28 final airport. Uh, Barry Springwater, Papa Romeo Golf. I didn't catch her last there. We got uh, cut off. Let's say again, over. Guelph traffic, Oscar Charlie Hotel is turning the final 3 2 Guelph. Please have some courtesy and let a man talk before you cut him off. Over. <laughs> so to me? I don't think so. At the time, we had no way of knowing we were stepping on anyone, but upon review, I guess it was us unknowingly doing so. I don't know who the hell they're talking to. Springwater? Barry? Is that what they said? Yeah, they're, they're not here. Barry traffic, Papa Romeo Golf. Uh, anyway, whatever. Clearly, shared frequencies are something to think about, but I've never seen it that bad before. Okay, I got 80 miles. Okay, a little fast. Yeah, but I haven't added full flaps yet. Yeah, so you can be 74 with uh, two notches and 71 with full. You got across it from the left. A little high, but... Yeah, well, full flaps, you know what's going to happen, right? Yeah. Just get ready if you're breaking a steep yep. descent that you may need to add a shot of power. Yep. So I'm working to get a new video up every second Friday. In this case, the second part to this series will be up in a day or so, but that's an anomaly and I'm not going to make it a chargeable post on Patreon and keep your flight chops sharp. Nice. That came down really quick, eh? Yeah. Like, that shot of power really helped, so thanks for uh, That's cool. mentioning that, because otherwise we would have landed hard. Yeah. <laughs> and maybe just hold your thoughts on your foot just for good habit. Flying the Super Cub has made me a lot better about that kind of stuff, because yeah. you have to do that in the Super Cub. Yeah. You could have got away with it in this plane, but in the Super Cub, if, 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 with that kind of descent, if I didn't have a shot of power, it yeah. would have just smashed when I tried to do a flare, because it yeah. would have just gone into a full-on sink once I tried to go with back pressure. Right. Whereas these planes, especially with the low wing, it creates more of a cushion in the ground effect. 